Hi everyone, I am going to solve a classic Sudoku today created by Rifclown. We thank Rifclown very much for allowing us to make a video on the Sudoku and as per feedback there is a, a tricky step in the Sudoku which is uh, received really well. So I hope you guys enjoy watching this video. You can try out the Sudoku yourself. The link is given in the description of the video. Please do give it a try and come back and watch the video. So I'll jump right into the solve now. Uh, normal classic rules apply. Each row, each column and 3 by 3 box uh, in the grid will have digits from 1 to 9 uh, without any repetitions. So we had covered uh, classic Sudoku previously by Rifclown on the channel. I think uh, I had solved two Sudokus by the same author and it was received really well. Uh, received a lot of views and seem to have been enjoyed by majority of you. So hope this video is also entertaining to uh, you people. So I'll solve it now. Okay, so what do we do? There is a 1 in column 1 and 1 in row 6. So that gives a 1 here and that gives a 1 here. Okay, one in column five, one in row two. So one goes in one of these two cells. Okay, rest of the boxes don't look appealing to me because there are so many cells that you can just uh, put the one into. For instance, if you look at box eight, this is box eight. Uh, it has five options for the one, these two cells and these three cells. So let's just look for something else now. Mm. Okay, uh, I'm actually seeing a pair, but before that I'm seeing if uh, we could make some useful uh, corner pencil marks like these. But I don't think there are uh, many corner pencil marks that you can uh, make in this grid now. Can you? I don't think so. So let us uh, look at this pair that I just now spotted. Uh, column 2 has 5 and 6 and row 3 has 5 and 6 which means these 5 cells can't take 5, 6 and that allows me to lock a 5, 6 path in these 2 cells. And now continuing along that direction there is a 5 in one of these 2 cells and 5 here. So 5 goes in here and because of this 5 I get my first digit right a nice one at that. And if you look at column 8 now, there is only one cell left for the 5 and we have placed that. And 5 in row 9 goes down into one of these two cells. So we also placed a 6, right? 6 into one of these two cells and there is a 6 here. So 6 goes in here. And I can see that you can place a 6 right away. So this could have been placed at the start too. A 6 cannot be in column 7 and 6 cannot be in row 7 and row 8. So 6 goes here. Okay, 7 is in column 7, 7 is in row 1. So that gives me a corner pencil mark of 7 here. And this is a really useful uh, pointing pair. So whenever you uh, mark uh, pencil marks, uh, in a box in a straight line like this you can call them a pointing pair right into only two cells so for instance if you have let's say uh, narrow down uh, seven to these two cells then this is not a pointing pair however if you narrow down the position of a digit into exactly two cells in a straight line doesn't matter vertically or horizontally you can call that a pointing pair so now we have a pointing pair of sevens here and along with this given seven i can get the digit here so all these I think could have been done at the start itself. Okay, so sevens. I got the seven here. It's not much. Uh, it's not of much use. So there is a three in column two. So that gives me three in one of these two cells. Ah, this is beautiful, guys. Uh, look at middle box, 
again this is something which we could have done at the start but primarily we are focusing on corners right so we weren't able to see these right away so you have 1 to 8 as givens and 3 4 and 5 as givens outside this box which means that there are only three cells which you can lock 3 4 5 into and they must go in here and which means that these three cells now must be 6 7 and a 9 that's beautiful uh, really nice when you get, uh, lock a lot of digits like that and if you look at this cell this can't be 6 or a 7 so immediately I can pin down a 9 there so that becomes a 6 7 path and now row 4 looks interesting to me we have 3 4 6 7 and 5 and 9 so we need uh, 1 2 1 8 so you have 2 8 here so this must be a 1 which means these two cells are 2 8 So let me revisit this row because it has 5 digit, uh, five givens and clues, I mean 5 uh, digits, ok, so this cell can be 1, 2, 7, 5, 8, 6 and 9, so this would have to be 3 and 4, the rest of the cells have more options, ok, this cannot be 6, so this is 3, 4 and 9. Ah, look at column 6 guys, 3, 4, 5, we have locked a triplet 3, 4, 5 into these cells. So which means the rest of the cells, namely these, cannot be 3, 4 or 5, nor can they be a 6, 7 or a 9, so which means they are only 1, 2 and 8. And you can remove the corner 5 from here and 5 gets pushed here, removing the 5 from this cell, so that's a 3, 4 now and 5 is in one of these two cells. Okay, so this column now, you have 3, 7, 5 and 6 and you also know that 1 and 2 cannot be in these two cells. Now the interesting bit is that, look at these two clues, they are also 1 and 2 which means that none of these cells can be 1 and 2 and that leaves exactly 2 cells to place 1 and 2 in that column, row 5, column 2, row 5 and column 2 and row 9 and column 2, that is really nice. So this is 1 and 2 and that is 1 and 2 and the icing on the cake is that you also have a 2 to uh, resolve that. So that's a 1, that's a 2, that gives a 1 here and this 2 resolves this 2 8 path. So this is 8 and that is 2. So so far the solve has been really uh, pleasing and nothing too hard I would say just uh, you know triplets and uh, pairs really interesting. So let me remove these colors. Okay, we placed a 2 here and an 8 here. Okay, so the 8 is in one of these two cells, so which means 8 is in one of these uh, two cells. Oh, 8 is in one of these three cells actually, so 8 is in one of these two cells. Uh, 2, 3, 7, 1, 5, 6, so this must be a 4 or a 9. Ah, 4 is here, so that's a 9, and that becomes a 4, 8 pair. And now these two cells must be a 3, 9 pair to complete the box. So we have nicely set up this box, right? It's going to be resolved probably towards the end when you get some clues. So 1, 2, 9, 3, 4, 8. Let me finish off this box. These must be 5, 6 and 7. Okay, 2, 4 cannot be in column 3 and 2 cannot be in row 9, so which means 2 goes in one of these two cells and this column has a triplet, that is really nice. You have a 5, 6, 7 triplet in column 1 and that narrows down 7 to one of these two cells, removing the 7 from this cell, so 
we have a 5, 6, 7 triplet in here and a 1 and 8. So remaining digits are uh, 2, 3, 4 and 9, right? So this would be 3, 4, 9. Okay, we have a simple deduction here. This cannot be 1 or a 2, so this would have to be 8. And which means 8 gets removed from these two cells. Okay, where does the 2 go in column 7? There is only one cell left, so 2 goes here. And that puts the 2 in one of these two cells. So I think we can make use of this row now. We have a 3, 9 pair. We also have 2, 5, 6 in here. So 3, 9, 2, 5, 6. So that leaves 1, 4, 7, 8 in these two cells. 8 is also removed. So these two cells can only be 1, 4, 7. 1 is removed. So that's 4, 7 and that is... 1, 4 and 7. Okay, so I think the Sudoku has started becoming slightly harder because the digits are not so easy to come by. Maybe there are a few digits that can be placed easily at this point, uh, which I'm missing now. Okay, look at row 9. So we have 1, 5, 8 and 2 and 6. So we need 3, 4, 7, 9. This is not a 7. That's a 3, 4, 9. So 7 goes into these uh, two cells, one of these two cells. Ah, that's nice. So 1 must go in one of these two cells, right? Because of this one, uh, we can get a pointing pair of 1s here in box 3. And that leaves only one cell for the one in column 7. That's nice. And why I'm saying it's really nice is that it helps us resolve these two. Superb. So this one gives me a 2 here, which pushes the 2 into this cell and gives me a 1 here. Really nice. And that gives me a 1 here. And that is a set of, you know, a spark kind of thing. Chain reaction, you can say. So 1 is removed from here. So we get a 4, 7 pair here. I'll just clean up the corners. And this 4, 7 is seeing this cell, so that's an 8, that's a 4, superb, a really nice classic. So this is not a 4, so that's a 3, 9, and that is a 3, 9. So let's look at row 1 now, because it has become suddenly interesting. And where does the 8 go? In row 1, there is only one cell, 8 goes here. So this becomes a 3 and a 9. Okay, this vacant lot is bothering my eye. 1, 5, 7, 2, 1, 6. So we need 3, 4, 8, 9 here. You have an 8 here. So that's a 3, 4, 9. And that gives an 8 here. So 8 is in column 8. 8 is in column 9. So 8 goes in one of these two cells. And which can be used to place an 8 here. And now if you look at column 7, this must be a 3, 4 and a 9. Okay, you have a 2 here, so which means that you can place the 2 here. And uh, just I'll write some pencil marks here and close down that column. Column 1 has 5, 6, 7 triplet and 1, 2 and 8, which means this must be 3, 4, 9. And there must be a pointing pair of 4s in here. Just by using simple scanning, you can get that. There is a pointing pair. Uh, this column is not interesting to me. Maybe a little. Look at this cell. You have 1, 5, 8, 2, 1, 6. So this cell uh, cannot be a 4, 2. So this can only be 3, 7, 9. Right? There is no other option for that cell. Eight goes in one of these two cells. So there is a pair here which I didn't notice. One, two, four, five, and six. So remaining digits are three, seven, eight, nine. So this is not a seven. So that's a three, eight, and nine. 
So looking at this row now, one is not here, one is not here, so one has to go here. So did we get all the ones? I seem to be missing some simple deductions here. Did we get all the twos? Okay, we got all the twos. Okay. And now looking at this row again, uh, this can't be eight. So there are only three options for that cell. Three, four, and a nine. So do we have some x, y wings here? So for uh, viewers who are hearing this for the first time, x, y wing or y wing are one and the same. And uh, I'll not venture into explaining that unless we spot a y wing here. So do we have something called skyscrapers here? I don't think so. Okay, six is in column seven and nine. So six goes in one of these two cells. Okay, actually uh, there is something called a unique rectangle at this point in the Sudoku. So I can straight away say that this cell has to be 7, it cannot be 5 and 6. Uh, this is based on the fact that any Sudoku created by a good author or uh, whenever it is in a competition will always have a unique solution. So probably you can make use of that fact. If you were to write a 5 and a 6 in this cell, let's assume that this cell takes 5 and 6. Now after completing the Sudoku, when you get a solution. You can always replace these four digits, just swap these four digits. Let's say 5 and 6 come here. So you can eventually swap the 5 and the 6 uh, and even swap 5 and 6 here to get two solutions. But a Sudoku always has unique solutions. So this is something called a unique rectangle. So and it is a really uh, advanced logic in classic Sudokus. So I can straight away write a 7 here at this point. But since we are solving uh, to find the logic, let's see, um, to see if there is something else uh, better than this. Okay, I'm looking at this row now, 1, 2, uh, 8 and 9 and you have a 6, so this is 3, 4, 5, 7 and you also have a 5, so I'm going to write those, that is a 3, 4 and 7 and that is appearing suddenly interesting, 1, 2, 5, 6, so 3, 4, 7, 8, 9. Okay, I'm seeing something here. So look at this cell. Uh, I'm going to say that both of these cells are the same. And why is that? Because whichever uh, digit goes into this cell must be in one of these two cells, right? In box 8. So the cell in red, row eight, uh, row five, column five has to be in one of these two cells uh, because this is three and four and none of these cells are three and four and by the power of Sudoku, the cell in the red must go into one of these two cells. Now using classic again, where does the cell in red go in column six? It would have to go here. So both of these cells are one and the same. Wow, and that is giving rise to an absolutely gorgeous reduction guys. This is really nice, really, really nice. Since both of these cells are same, where does that cell go in column seven? Awesome guys, this is a really awesome step, superb. And I hope that this step uh, really gives me something considerable. Um, you have three here. 
you will also have three here. If you have four here, you will also have four here. Now look at this column. Where does the red cell go? It, uh, these two cells are eliminated. Oops, sorry. So these two cells cannot be red cells and none of the other cells have a three or a four in them. So they also cannot be the red cell. So the red cell in column seven has to get in here, which means that this cannot be a nine because you don't have a nine here. So this is not a nine. And that means that the red cell in column four, we know that it must be in one of these two cells. Now it cannot be this cell anymore by Sudoku. So which means it would have to go here. Awesome. This is awesome, really. And now again using Sudoku, you can you know that these cannot be four. Super. This is gorgeous, guys. What a step, really. I mean, something really fresh and new. Uh, I was hoping to see some technique here, maybe X-wing or uh, Y-wing or uh, something else. I didn't expect something of this sort. This was really nice. Now using Sudoku, where does the red cell go in row eight? Just using classic. It would have to obviously be going into this cell. And which means that these two cells cannot be four. Awesome. This is absolutely beautiful. Really, really beautiful step. Superb. I'm enjoying this Sudoku already. So uh, we can blindly put threes in all these cells. Right. That is really good. All these cells must be three because we just eliminated the four from there. And now, does this really help us? I think it is going to because I'm already seeing so many digits just falling like a pack of cards. So you have three here and that becomes three and nine. And this three gives a nine here, a three here. That gives a four here for the column. So we finished the column now, column seven, I mean. Uh, now you have three that gives a nine here. Okay, so we can finish off this cell because you have three nine here, so that is a seven. And this three removes the three from these cells, so that's a four nine pair. That gives me an eight here, finishing off this box. So three is removed from these two cells, gives a four nine pair, so eight goes here. Finishing row eight. So this must be four and nine, and seven has to go in here for row seven. And that results the seven six pair. Seven seven six giving a six here. This would have to be a four. And that gives a nine, giving a four, giving a nine, giving a four, giving a nine. This would have to be a four. This would have to be a four five. That is resolved immediately. So that's a four, that's a five. Okay, so four in here gives me a four and a seven in here, one, three, seven, eight, two, four, five. So I need six, nine in here because of this nine, I get a nine here and a six here. So one, two, six, nine, four, five, eight. So I need three and seven. That's a three. So that is seven and that is three. So seven is moved into this cell. And you can see that the reduction which, which I mentioned at the start uh, by using uniqueness is proved true here. So we uh, said at the start that this cell cannot be 5 and 6 and it would have to be a 7 and that has been proved now. So this can't be a 7, so this is 7, that's a 5, 6, that can be resolved, so that is a 6, that is a 5, that's a 5 and that's a 6, hopefully we should get that message. Looks good to me, yes it does and the solution is right. What an excellent creation, really something uh, fresh logic I would say, really really fresh logic. None of the uh, classic techniques or were needed here. I wonder what the solver would do at this point. I mean at the point where we found this step, right? It was really nice uh, and I don't think you can uh, catalog this step into any of the techniques known. Uh, maybe, not sure. So, hope you guys enjoyed watching this uh, video. It was an excellent Sudoku by Rift Clown and we once again thank the author for letting us making a make a video on the Sudoku. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, please do give a thumbs up to the video and comment under the video so that the algorithm suggests our videos to more people and do remember to subscribe to the channel. We hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.